Hello everyone, Complexity Geek here. Uh, today we're going to take a look at a infectious disease model that I developed as part of my research for the Complexity and Health Group here at Ashtabula campus of Kent State University. Um, this model is basically the result of the work that I did with these zombie models uh, that I've also done videos of. Uh, the code that I developed for those zombie models was instrumental in putting together this infectious disease model. Uh, this this uh, model uh, is a simulation of the spread of an infectious disease that is spread via contact. Uh, got a couple uh, different things here going on, lots of moving parts. Uh, unlike the zombies, we actually have a, a real-time graph that will operate as part of the simulation, uh, showing the different uh, healthy infected, sick, sick immune, and dead uh, agents uh, that are in the model. And they'll also have a total, running total, below of uh, the state of the agents. Uh, you get your standard uh, controls here to run the model. You can set up your model here. Go to run it. You can This one you can draw walls just like you did in the zombie programs. And you can also clear turtles if you just want to get rid of the turtles and leave any walls that you've uh, put in. Or you can clear all and it gives you a completely clean slate. Uh, the different variables that are controllable in this simulation, uh, we can start with an initial healthy of anywhere from 0 to 1,000. Uh, initial sick, you can start at 1 and go as high as 1,000. You can set the incubation period of the disease. You can set the length of how long the person is sick once, they, once the incubation is over. Uh, you can set an immune chance so that when a person becomes in contact with someone with the disease, they have a percentage chance to be immune to the disease. And then you also have a terminal chance where you can adjust the virulence of the disease and how, how likely it is for a person to actually die from the disease. Um, initially, we'll set this at uh, 10 days. It's the standard incubation period for... Uh, like swine flu and influenza and stuff like that. Uh, usually course of the disease is anywhere from 5 to 10 days depending on the individual so we can split the difference and say 7. Uh, immune chance, most diseases um, with the research that I took a look at, you've got between a 10 and a 13 or 14 percent chance to be immune uh, to most communi communicatable diseases. Uh, that varies from the disease to disease, so you can adjust that, you know, whatever, whatever, what you're trying to model. And then uh, your terminal chance. Um, so it's like if you're modeling Ebola, you know, terminal chance is pretty close to 100. Um, we'll give it just as an example. We'll give it about a 43% terminal chance. All right, we'll start out with 600 healthy people. Yeah, well, 6, 605 is close enough, so we'll go with that. Uh, this first run, run we'll do with no walls. We'll hit the setup here. Uh, blue is your healthy. Yellow is the uh, sick person. And then once they show up, the uh, infected will show up in kind of a Pepto-Bismol pink. Um, if you become immune, uh, you'll be a light blue. And if you're dead, it shows up as black on the graph, but it'll actually leave like a little corpse that looks like bones on the screen if you end up dying from the disease. So let's uh, go ahead and we'll kick this off and see what the run looks like. Okay, you can see as he comes in contact, people are becoming sick and infected, and then they turn sick. And you can see the graph is changing as we run. We'll stop the thing here. You can see uh, you've got your healthy curve running down. The infective curves, curve comes up, and then there's a slight delay. Your sick curve comes up, and then the terminal starts kicking in. Our dead totals are starting to add up as well. So let's go ahead and run this to completion. Okay, and there we have leveled off. Everyone that's left is either immune or dead. Not a very pretty uh, endpoint, but there you go. 
Now you can come out with ex extremely different outcomes with this. Um, if you increase your immune chance, you can really change the curve. Let this run till it goes. And you can see how the curve changes on this. The spread is going a lot slower on this because the immune chance is a lot higher. And then you eventually do reach a crossover. And the last few are cacking off. Yeah. And there we go. All right, now you can see from that graph, you got quite a bit of a substantive difference between them. Um, and you can even uh, play with the terminal chance. Actually, if you do terminal, this is this is kind of worst case scenario. Let's say like if uh, I don't know Ebola times t times ten popped out there, the disease period is only three days. Let's see, it will set the immune chance really low, and the terminal chance is almost 100%. Now watch how fast this goes. Well, what the heck? <laughs> well, that could be explained as a statistical anomaly. Um, with an immune chance of six, the first two people infected became immune and the disease stopped dead in its tracks. All right, that can't happen twice in a row. Let's try that again. Okay, there we got some sick people. Well, that's a really sharp curve. Look at that. And they, ramp, and they zip up and they ramp up. And look at that dead. Wow. Okay, so that one run with the two guys that were immune was definitely a statistical anomaly. Um, unfortunately, with the complexity of the world, and even with simulation models, that does happen occasionally. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, look at this model. Uh, complete code on this model can be found on my website, The Tipping Point. Uh, there'll be a link down in the description. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.